Hi guys, and welcome back to the Big Sew Along, uh, where today I have uh, a few new things to show you. I am continuing on my uh, shirt journey for the fall, starting with this really lovely Bianca tunic from Tina Givens. Um, I also have a quick look at the Aubrey slip, also from Tina Givens. That's um, from size show number one, I think. Uh, but to start, I have a little bit of a public service announcement for anybody who hasn't already heard, and I'm sure many of you have already, um, but um, a member of the sewing community at large, um, Diane Erickson, who is a uh, pattern designer and an artist, and um, she she also she does all kinds of really, really cool stuff. I, I only know her really, I really knew her. Um, from her patterns. We used to carry them at um, Haberman's when I worked there years ago. And I, they might still carry hers there, I don't know. Um, she doesn't have a huge range of patterns, but she has really cool patterns. And she's very um, heavily like uh, influenced by um, texture and um, pattern and um, color and mixing um, different things together in a single pattern. Uh, her, her stuff is really unique and very um, just super cool. In any case, um, Diane has a home in a studio in Oregon um, and she lost all of it this past week during those, um, during these really awful fires that are just destroying the western part of the United States. There is a GoFundMe campaign for her and I will leave a link to that below if I can find it. Um, I saw it in um, a Facebook group earlier this week and I will do my best to locate that and link it for you below. Um, however, another option um, if you're interested or if you can or, or if you want to help um, Diane rebuild, um, you could always go to her online shop Apparently her um, inventory is not in Oregon. It's um, somewhere else. It's remote. So all of that stuff is still available for purchase and it comes out. It's there's no delay or anything like that. Um, but she also has a number of her um, items online um, as downloads. Uh, the sewing patterns. She does also have some really cool stencils if you like doing that. Um, she sells also uh, fabric paints and fabric uh, markers and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So if you are of a mind to do that, I think that is a great option. I in fact did do that. I went over to the, um, now I'm not going to even be able to remember what I got. I went over to the uh, Diane Erickson website and I bought a few things. Um, I One of which I'm going to show you today. The uh, It's called the French Fold Shrug. Um, it is a zero waste garment and I'm really, really into that lately. I don't know if you guys remember last week I had a zero waste book that I shared with you. I lent that to a friend of mine so I haven't been able to make anything out of it but I really want to. Um, this French fold shrug is a zero waste design. It's really cool. Like what, before I started making it I was like, oh, what? what do they want me to do? I, I'm glad I stuck with it because it's super cool. Um, so I will show you that. Um, this, uh, I made mine out of, I made the small, first of all, and you can see in the pictures, there's no extra room in there. I, I don't know if I told you guys this before. Um, I'm a 39 inch bust. I don't know what my shoulder width is. Um, I should know that, but I don't. Uh, so anyways, that, uh, that's just to give you an idea. That's what that looks like in a small on a 39 inch full bust, 38 inch high bust, 34 inch under bust, just for reference. <clears throat> I made that from less than a yard of fabric and I used, I used two different fabrics because I lined mine. Um, and I used less than a yard of each fabric. So it was probably maybe three quarters of a yard of each fabric. Both of my fabrics were scraps from something else. Um, they're both linen. One is a linen that looks, it's got like a denim. Maybe it is linen denim because it's white on the back. So I guess that does make it a denim. Anyways, whatever. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a denim linen and then the back side, the lining side is is just uh, solid navy blue linen. Um, 
I really, really like this pattern a lot. I actually came, I'm already like my head is just swimming with ideas of other things to use, uh, other ways to make this. So um, I, like I said, I just used scrap for mine this time because I had never used this pattern and I just wanted to see how it, it worked. And I'm so glad I did because I really, really love this pattern. The other thing that she, that Diane has on her website that I also purchased is something called the River Tunic. A friend of mine from the fabric store, uh, my friend Jan, has actually made this a few times. Um, and I always really like it on her. I think I've actually only seen hers. I've seen two of hers. Um, and I really like them. Uh, this is also, this is another zero waste design. I have not made this yet, but just for reference, I think I'm going to be working on that for next week. Or the week after, depends. Um, the um, the other patterns that I purchased are uh, I purchased the Capitola pant because that is a pant that's totally up my alley. Um, it's not it's a it's a pant much like the Plinka pant, or if you're familiar with um, cutting line designs, their one seam pant. It's they're all very similar really like the shape of this and I have a hard time duplicating shapes just from looking at them so also I will say I think I said this when I was talking about um, the pockets pattern that I purchased from Diane Erickson a few like a couple of weeks ago it, well worth the purchase price just for the plethora of ideas she has in there for making um, design details i mean like just stuff you would never think of well i would never think of on my own so okay so i bought the river tunic the um capitola pant and this thing called the casisado coat I, I don't really have any clue if i'm pronouncing that properly she has on her website something called Design Experience Shirts 2.0. And because I am on a shirt roll, this really appealed to me. Um, she has this, uh, like a separately purchased, like instructions to make the coat pattern into shirts. And again, just a ton of ideas. So anyway, if that, if any of that stuff appeals to you, if that kind of thing is up your alley, definitely check Diane's website out. It's Diane, Diane Erickson. Again, I'll leave a link to that below. So like I said, if you are in, uh, on, in the market for a couple new patterns and uh, any of these appeal to you, now is a really good time uh, to make that purchase from Diane because it would really, I'm sure, uh, and any purchase would go towards helping her out uh, in rebuilding her life. Um, now on to my next project. Let's talk about the Aubrey slip. I'll show you a couple pictures here. The Aubrey slip, I'm pretty sure is also from Seychelles number one, much like the magpie. I think that was the slip issue. I could be wrong. I can't remember. Anyways, um, this is the first time I've made the Aubrey. Uh, you can see, I, I tried to get a, a close-up picture so you could see there's actually, there is a dart in this one. Remember I said in the, um, magpie that it was missing the dart in the sleeve. So you don't need to worry about this one. That's totally, it's, it, it's there. It's really super simple, like two shoulder seams, two side seams, bind up your edges, put a hem in it. This one has, um, a little cutout and, um, Directions for a ruffle. I did not put a ruffle on mine. I did, however, put a bias cut bow, which I think is really cute. Um, I didn't use the ruffle because I just didn't have enough. I didn't have any more fabric. This was also a scrap of fabric, so this is all I had. Um, the only thing I would change about the Aubrey, I really, really like this. Um, the only thing I would change about it is the armholes. You can see I tried to get a close-up of that, too. The armholes are too small. I kind of knew that I could, they looked small to begin with. And I did actually, I know people are going to be like, why wouldn't you just try that on? I did. I tried it on before I put the bias tape on. I tried it on and it was small, but it wasn't like super small. And I thought, well, okay. So once I put my bias tape on, I'm going to sew it down, trim off like at least a quarter of an inch, but probably a half an inch, depending on what your seam allowance is and fold it over. So you're going to lose a half an inch all the way around. I thought it would be fine. It's not fine. I just tried it on today after um, a three days of it hanging in my closet with findings that made it too small. So just be aware. I think that those armholes are a little bit small.
I think I'm gonna cut mine, uh, just cut down like a half an inch at the bottom and it'll be fine. I like it, as I like that it's a closely fitted armhole, but I have to be able to move my arm. So, so um, I, yeah, I'm gonna um, take that off and cut the armhole down about a half an inch and then hopefully I will still have enough uh, bias tape to get it back on there. Um, I think that's it about the Aubrey. Next up is the Bianca tunic, which is what I'm wearing today. I really like this shirt. This is in a, oh, I should tell you my Aubrey is in um, a linen rayon blend. That one is an old purchase from Haberman Fabrics from like a few years ago. This is also a fabric from Haberman Fabrics. This is current. This is a um, an Italian uh, cotton shirting. It does have a little bit of lycra in it. Um, I love this fabric. I just think it's really, really cute. Um, anyways, I love stripes. So, um, this pattern is, the Bianca is like a tunic, shirt, jacket, really all around whatever you want to do. Um, there are a couple of things that you might want to be aware of in this pattern. The, um, I feel like the armhole, the arm is pretty good. It's really right at, um, my shoulder. I, I have slightly broad shoulders and I have really square shoulders, so you know, it, on most people, I think it's probably going to be fine. If you're really broad in the back, you might need to make that a little bit longer, but otherwise I think it's probably not going to be a problem. Um, it has this, this pattern has a little gather detail on the front. And what you do is you, you get, you slash into the front of the shirt and then you gather that bit up then you fold the gathered part and the right side of the shirt together and sew it together on the back side. And you sew it, you sew across the, the gathered part into the shirt. And the only way to get it to lay flat then, of course, is to sew that straight back out of the shirt. So it's like a dart, is what I'm saying. This, I've had this exact same construction method and a few other patterns. Um, a vintage pattern that I've used a couple of times a long time ago. And I want to say it was like a, it was a tunic pattern. And I can't remember, I can't remember whose pattern it was. It might've been one of the big four. Again, it was a, it was a while back. So it's hard for me to remember. It had gathering right here under the bust. Um, it was a, it was a slit. So you gathered that in like that and whatever. It was the same method. And I don't like this method. <laughs> I, there is no other method that I can think of. I think that's the only way to do this particular thing. I just don't really like it because it doesn't seem to matter how I try. I still feel like I get a little bit of a dimple at the end of that row of stitching. But here's what I did. Ah. This is the part that I'm talking about right here. This right here. Um, so you cut the fabric cut into your shirt like this, you gather this bit up and then you sew it together. So instead of sewing mine right sides together, I sewed mine wrong sides together so that you don't have that like, so that it's finished on the inside. And then I sewed a bias strip to it and folded it up and top stitched all the way around. I like the way it looks, but you can see what I'm talking about. This right here is where the end of that dart is. And it's the same on both sides. Um, so, I don't know. There's no way around it. I just, maybe somebody has a better idea of how to make that make that look nicer. I don't know. I like the, the bias um, covering on it. I think it looks cute. I don't know. Maybe I'll just avoid making things with that, like gather into nowhere kind of dart thingy. Anyways, uh, I like it. I like the way it looks. It's fine. I just, I find it annoying that I can't get it to look any nicer than I can. So there's that. The other thing is, um, the color seems to be a little, and I think that this now, now that I've made this, I was talking about this last week on the Lotus. And I think that this was the problem I had with the Lotus collar. And I'm just remembering it now. It seems to be a little 
straight. It's not laying very, it doesn't lay great. And I'll tell you, I think what the problem is. This is the facing. So it's sewn to the, the right side and folded over to the inside and then it rolls back over itself, which means that you need a teeny tiny bit more fabric in this facing than you do in the shirt so that it has room for the fold of fabric. And I have a feeling that is part of the reason that it doesn't lay as nicely as I would like it to. When I make this shirt again, I will probably, I'll show you in a clip here actually what I was planning on doing. So here's our Bianca um, front piece. And you can see, this is the, obviously the front edge. This is the collar that lays back like this. So this gets attached at the to the other side in the center back and it folds over and this whole thing folds over like that. So the part that seems a little short to me is this piece is fine, but here's the facing. You can see when I put them together, um, if I have my neck edges together, which obviously they would be, um, you can see right here that this, um, this edge on the facing is shorter than it is on the actual shirt. And I feel like in order for this to be able to fold under and then get hand whip stitched down and look nicely, um, it needs to be the same length. The other thing is, I think for my next one, to get the collar to roll over more nicely, you can see, I think that this, it might, this actually might just be the way that I've, I've cut it. I mean, it's hard to tell, right? Um, but it looks like the facing piece is, on mine, it looks like it's a little bit smaller. It's probably exactly the same size. It actually, I think it needs to be a teeny bit bigger. So on my next one, what I think I will do in order to get this to roll over nicely is on the front edge of my shirt piece here, I'll just trim off like an, an eighth of an inch all the way around. And that will be, may allow this to fold over to the front more nicely and have a, um, like I'll account for the, the fold of fabric so it, it lays more nicely. So anyways, here, is just so you can see where this is on the actual this part that I'm talking about that's too short on the actual shirt here <clears throat> this is the front of the shirt this is the collar this is the back seam that I'm talking about which is this right here so it's this piece under here and you can see I you can see where it's cut short there I just searched one off and ended up stitching it down but it would be because it was exactly the same length as the outer piece as this piece so it would have been nice if I had a little more room there you can see that I thought I was going to have room because I split it so I could fold it under and if I lift this up a little you can kind of see how close it is because it looks like I missed a bit it's literally right on the edge of that so I didn't have any room to fold this under which I would have liked to do so if you're of a mind to fold this piece under instead of just stitching in the ditch and stitching it down like that then you're going to want to make this bit this edge right here on the um, facing piece uh, probably a quarter of an inch longer so the only other things i did to this shirt i did add elastic at the back i um winded up with my bias uh pieces on the side and just gathered it across the back. I didn't make it tight, I just gathered it in a little bit. You don't need to do that. There's nothing wrong with the way the shirt fits without it. I just was playing around. I like the way it looked, so I went with that. Um, and the other thing is I made my shirt sleeves about an inch longer than they are in the pattern. I think um, if you remember last week, we were talking about the Lotus and I used the Bianca, which is this one, this sleeve for that, and it was just a tad bit short. So um, this week I actually, I didn't have enough fabric to cut the sleeves longer. So I cut them a little bit shorter and made big cuffs from another piece of fabric. And it turned out really well. So it essentially is about an inch longer than it would be um, if I hadn't added anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, don't, I don't really know if there are any gentlemen. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, I think that's about it for today. Um, like I said, next week, I'm going to try to work on a couple of my new Diana Erickson pieces. And I have had a Tina Givens Gia slip dressy thingy, tunicky thing. 
um, on my cutting table for about three weeks now. So I'm really hoping to get to that this week too. Um, I will leave you with a couple of mm, pictures or videos of me um, showing off this new stuff just so you can see how it fits and how, how it flows and all of that business. Thanks again, guys, so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Um, also, to everybody who has subscribed, there are like more than 50 people now, which makes me really, really happy. So thank you so much. I really genuinely appreciate that. Um, I will look forward to seeing you guys next Thursday. Bye.